Cystitis is simply an inflammation of the bladder, and it's most commonly caused by a bacterial infection. This type of bladder infection falls under the umbrella of urinary tract infections, which can affect any part of the urinary system, including the urethra, ureters, bladder, and kidneys. However, when we specifically talk about cystitis, we're focusing on the bladder. To understand cystitis better, let's dive into the anatomy a bit. The bladder is a hollow, muscular organ in your lower abdomen that stores urine before it's excreted from the body. Normally, urine is sterile, meaning it doesn't contain any bacteria. But when bacteria manage to enter the bladder, they can multiply and cause an infection, leading to inflammation. This results in the uncomfortable and often painful symptoms associated with cystitis. While it can affect anyone, it's particularly prevalent among women. In fact, studies show that about 50 to 60% of women will experience at least one episode of cystitis in their lifetime. This higher prevalence in women is largely due to anatomical differences. Women have a shorter urethra, which makes it easier for bacteria to reach the bladder. Men, children, and the elderly can also get cystitis, but the incidence is significantly lower compared to women. Differentiating cystitis from other conditions can be a bit tricky since many urinary tract issues share similar symptoms. For instance, you might confuse cystitis with urethritis, which is an inflammation of the urethra, which is the tube that carries urine out of the body. The key difference is where the inflammation is located. Cystitis affects the bladder, while urethritis is limited to the urethra. So, what causes cystitis? The majority of cystitis cases are due to bacterial infections. The main cause here is Escherichia coli, or E. coli, which is commonly found in the gastrointestinal tract. While E. coli is harmless in the intestines, it can cause trouble if it gets into the urinary tract. This often happens through the urethra, the tube that carries urine out of the body. Several activities can also increase the risk of bacterial cystitis. Sexual intercourse can introduce bacteria into the urinary tract, leading to what is sometimes called honeymoon cystitis. Other than that, improper wiping after using the toilet, from back to front, can transfer bacteria from the anal area to the urethra. Even something as simple as wearing tight clothing or using irritating hygiene products can increase the risk of bacteria reaching the bladder. Using certain types of contraception, like spermicides and diaphragms, can also disrupt the natural balance of bacteria and increase the risk of infection. There is also a chronic form of cystitis with no clear cause called interstitial cystitis. It's also known as painful bladder syndrome and is characterized by long-term bladder pressure, bladder pain, and sometimes pelvic pain. Unlike bacterial cystitis, interstitial cystitis is not caused by an infection and doesn't respond to antibiotics. The exact cause is unknown, but it may involve a defect in the bladder lining, an autoimmune response, or nerve abnormalities. Symptoms of cystitis. The symptoms can vary from mild to severe, but they're generally quite bothersome. The most common symptom is a burning sensation or pain during urination. You might feel the need to urinate more frequently than usual, often with very little urine output each time. This can be accompanied by an urgent need to go, even if your bladder isn't full. The urine itself might look cloudy, have a strong odor, or even contain traces of blood, which can be alarming but is a common symptom. Additionally, you might experience discomfort or pain in your lower abdomen or pelvis. These symptoms can make daily activities uncomfortable and even disrupt your sleep if you're frequently waking up to urinate. It's important to note that if you develop symptoms like fever, chills, nausea, or flank pain, which is pain in your sides or back, this might indicate that the infection has spread to your kidneys, which is more serious and requires immediate medical attention. Diagnosis of cystitis. Diagnosing cystitis typically involves a visit to your doctor, who will start with a detailed medical history and a discussion of your symptoms. To confirm the diagnosis, a urine sample is usually taken for analysis. This urine test, known as a urinalysis, checks for the presence of bacteria, white blood cells, which indicate infection, red blood cells, and other substances that can help identify the cause of your symptoms. If bacteria are found, a urine culture might be done to determine the specific type of bacteria causing the infection and to test which antibiotics are most effective against it.
In some cases, especially if you have recurrent cystitis or if the infection doesn't respond to treatment, additional tests might be necessary. These can include imaging tests like an ultrasound or a CT scan to look at your urinary tract or a cystoscopy where a small camera is inserted into the bladder through the urethra to examine the bladder lining. Treatment for cystitis. The treatment for cystitis primarily depends on its cause. For bacterial cystitis, the standard treatment is a course of antibiotics. The specific antibiotic and the length of treatment depend on the type of bacteria identified and your overall health. Common antibiotics for cystitis include nitrofurantoin and ciprofloxacin. It's crucial to take the full course of antibiotics prescribed, even if you start to feel better before finishing the medication, to ensure that the infection is fully eradicated and to prevent the bacteria from becoming resistant. Over-the-counter pain relievers like ibuprofen or acetaminophen can also help alleviate the discomfort and pain associated with cystitis. Drinking plenty of water is also beneficial as it helps flush out bacteria from your bladder. Some people find relief from drinking cranberry juice or taking cranberry supplements, which are believed to prevent bacteria from sticking to the bladder walls, although the evidence on their effectiveness is mixed. For those who experience recurrent cystitis, preventive measures are important. Your doctor might recommend taking a low-dose antibiotic over a longer period to prevent infections. They may also suggest taking an antibiotic after sexual intercourse, if that's identified as a trigger. Staying well hydrated and practicing good hygiene can also help reduce the risk of recurrence. If cystitis is caused by irritants rather than bacteria, treatment focuses on avoiding the irritants and managing symptoms. This might involve switching to unscented personal hygiene products, changing contraceptive methods, or addressing any underlying health issues that could be contributing to the inflammation. On the other hand, interstitial cystitis, which is the chronic form of the condition, is more challenging to treat because it doesn't respond to antibiotics. Treatment for interstitial cystitis aims to alleviate symptoms and improve the quality of life. This might include medications like pentose and polysulfate sodium, which can help restore the bladder lining, or antihistamines to reduce inflammation. Physical therapy can also be beneficial particularly if pelvic floor dysfunction is contributing to symptoms. In some cases, procedures like bladder distension, which is basically stretching the bladder with water or gas, can help manage pain and urinary frequency. Dietary changes can also play a role in managing interstitial cystitis. Some people find that certain foods and drinks can exacerbate their symptoms, so identifying and avoiding these triggers can be helpful. Common irritants include caffeinated beverages, alcohol, spicy foods, and artificial sweeteners. At the end, living with cystitis can be frustrating, especially if it's a recurrent or chronic issue. It's important to work closely with your healthcare provider to develop a treatment plan that works for you and to make lifestyle adjustments that can help prevent future episodes. This might involve regular follow-ups, adjusting medications, and exploring different treatment options as needed. Now, we want to hear from you. Do you or someone you know have cystitis? What symptoms did you have? Share with us your experiences and opinions in the comments below. We love to hear them. Thanks for watching.